for those of you who wanted to see the hydroponic system on video. This is my newest creation, I guess I could call it. It is a A-frame nutrient film technique hydroponic system. Each one of these channels uh, has 15 holes in it. Uh, the holes are 8 inches on center. I'm going to be growing hydroponic lettuces in here. Each channel has a 1 quarter inch tube to deliver the water. And I can show you how it looks back here. This is my, you know, tubing going in, quarter inch tubing, on a half inch tube. I just put some plugs in here and connected them that way. My water reservoir, it's pretty small. Um, for my ebb and flow tables, I have a 110 gallon reservoir and it's just so difficult to work with as far as emptying out the water, cleaning it out. So I really tried to downsize and I think that this tank is, is a really good size. Um, you might have a little bit of problem keeping my pH level um, at optimum around 5.5 to 6 just because of the, the amount of water in there. The more water that you have in your reservoir, the easier, to, the easier it is to maintain those levels. But it's a pretty simple system. The water goes into the channels down here and it is on a downgrade to this side. I only um, have the angle for about two inches from one side to the other. It seems to be flowing well. Um, I might need to make the angle a little steeper in the future. Um, I'll report back on that after I get some things growing. But here you can see my drains. I just put a uh, PVC elbow, this is a one inch slip downgraded to a half inch thread and then I put the half inch tubing on here. I attached a PVC pipe to this part and I just drilled half inch holes into the PVC pipe so it could drain down to this elbow and back into my reservoir. So far it seems to be working pretty well haven't had any problems at first when I first hooked it up I had you know a few leaks but I adjusted the angles on the tubing a little bit and I don't seem to have any leaks now this frame is so simple to build I actually built it completely from hand I didn't have a saw so I used a hand saw and a miter box to cut all the boards um, my I didn't want to have to mess with attaching the boards to one another at the right angle so I just used hinges and they they work perfectly. These uh, back, the straight up and down posts are at six feet tall and the ones that are an angle are at seven feet. There's four feet in between the boards to allow for you know a steep enough incline that all of my channels should be able to get enough light. I'm still a little worried about the lighting issue um, but once I get things growing I'll report back on that and see how it's going. I added the, this mylar reflective film. Let me go back out here so you could see. I added this mylar reflective film all the way around it and I'm also going to do a curtain on this side. There's also going to be uh, nine more channels going up over here. I haven't built that section yet. But I'll put a curtain completely around it to help just keep reflecting the light back in. And that way it's getting light from, from all sides. Um, my experiment right now is I'm going to use a thousand watt bulb. Um, this is a high pressure sodium bulb which is not best for vegetation growth so I'm going to switch that out to the metal highlight and just keep the metal highlight in. Um, if I were going to do flowering that would be a good use for the high pressure sodium bulbs but a quick note for saving a ton of money on lighting equipment. I got that hood 2000 watt high pressure sodium bulbs and the ballast for the 1000 watt ballast. It's a really nice one too. I guess it has some kind of super power um, that gives more lumens out than a regular ballast. It's by Grow Medics. So this ballast, the hood, 2000 watt bulbs, a 400 watt ballast hood, 
and Bob, all for 250 bucks off Craigslist. Craigslist is amazing for lights. I've got so many deals on there. People just, you know, growing things and having to, to get rid of their setups. It seems to be a common problem on Craigslist. And if you can take those lights and use them for legal purposes, you know, you can really make out as far as savings goes. Um, you know, you don't really know how old the lights are or the light bulbs are and how long they were used for. But the good thing about lettuces is that it doesn't need a really strong light. You can actually grow them just under fluorescent bulbs. So even if the bulbs are a little older, you know, they recommend that you change them every year and you can't really trust people on Craigslist to tell you the truth. But the good news is, is that even if it is an older bulb, it'll still work for growing lettuces. I haven't had any problems with that. The only problem I'm worried about in this particular setup is the way that this hood angles down. It's not going to you know, really reflect well onto my upper two channels. So I'm going to attach probably two to four uh, fluorescent fixtures up there just to make sure those top two channels get light on both sides. Um, let's see, I got all of my channels from Crop King. Um, they're out of Lodi, which is about an hour and a half from my house. And I had previously used downspouting. Um, the problem there is that there's no end caps available for the downspouting to close off your ends. It's very important that you keep light out to um, prevent algae growth. So I went ahead and invested the money on actual NFT channels. I definitely think it was a wise investment, especially for me, because this, you know, I'm starting out in my basement, but my ultimate goal is to uh, go into a commercial size greenhouse. So I figure if I start you know, with good equipment and learn how to use this, then I can always take these channels and put them in my greenhouse. I know somebody that bought from Crop King when they first started, I think it was like 25 years ago, and they're still using their channels. There's no reason for these to go bad as long as you take care of them, keep them clean. Um, these are a high grade plastic that's able to handle light without breaking down the material um, and causing damage from the sun. The nice thing too about these channels is that each one of them has a divot in the bottom to keep your water flow in the center of the channel, which is where all of your plant roots will be, or at least your rock wool from the beginning. Eventually the plant roots will take over the whole bottom of it, but the channels are also the perfect size. They're two inches, well I think it's an inch and a half by four inches. And with the downspouting and the PVC pipe, the problem I kept running into was that the channels were too deep um, with the circular bottom and my rock wool wasn't really connecting to the to the water and the nutrients so it was really difficult to to keep them moist. With these smaller channels I can use just one inch rock wool cubes and put them directly in there without the net pots where in the past with the PVC pipe I had to have the net pots and I actually cut the bottoms out of the net pots to push the rock wool down in farther so that it would hit the bottom of the PVC pipe channel. It was really difficult to, to regulate water flow in the PVC channel too so just for me this was a wise investment for people that are just trying to start out. Um, if for a cheap option, PVC pipe is, is a, probably an okay way to go if you're just going to you know do for home use and such. But if you want to set things up a little bit and try to start doing some more commercial growing, I really recommend these channels. I think I ended up paying about $30 per channel with all of the parts. Um, so, you know, it was a kind of a, an initial upfront investment, but like I said, I can use them more in the long term. So my lights will be on timers. I'm going to run those probably 16 hours a day. And then the, the water pump system for the, the flow through, the water will run 24 hours a day. Um, I think that's it for now. If you have any questions, please comment. And I'll be back with another video shortly of my ebb and flow tables where I'm going to be starting some hydroponic strawberries so I can have year-round strawberry production. Thank you.